Welcome to my favorite moments during the Team Fortress 2 comics. I don't have much to say, so let's just get to the point. You win. I give up. I'm here to offer you a new proposition. All or nothing. Winner takes... Ah! What is wrong with your desk? Nothing! I think you'll find your hands have been seared to a perfect 135 degrees. My flesh! It falls off my bones! Ha! You said it! Wait till you see what it does to these ribeyes. Don't fill up on hand meat now. Save room for steak and eggs! I'm not here for eggs, Hale. I'm here for the Manco Challenge. Bit well? The CEO of any other company can take over Manco legally if they beat you in unarmed combat, sir. That is a fantastic policy! You wrote it, sir. Wait, so is this sallow-chested old mummy saying what I sincerely pray to God that he's saying? <laughs> in a matter of speaking, yes. Let me... <laughs> Pretty funny starts for the first comic. Well... Next. Ghost DA! Ah, the defense rests. He's the f***ing prosecution. Ghost DA, district attorney. It's in the title of the f***ing show. If Ghost DA was a demolitions expert, they'd have already replaced him with a bloody robot. And what's with that doodly doodly doot noise? I'm a ghost sword. Have I ever made a f***ing noise when I disappear? I swear, sometimes I think this show isn't even written by ghosts. I feel like this sword on a regular basis, constantly complaining or arguing about how stupid and illogical things are. <laughs> but, um, he does make a noise when he disappears. I'm pretty sure he just whispers something very quietly. <laughs> Imagine if he did say doodly doodly do when he vanished. Obviously, wouldn't want to get injured before a shareholders meeting. What? Say now, Max, that's just guff. I got arrested because I broke into Charles Darling Zoo and tried to burn down Charles Darling Zoo and successfully burned down most of Charles Darling Zoo. And excessively mentioning Charles Darling Zoo at the end of every sentence. <laughs> Call me Mike. I'm going to kill you and anyone else who participates in this preposterous show trial. Me too! Yes, I may kill Scout in the confusion as well. <laughs> it's pretty funny, though. Beat it, soldier! I got a real lawyer this time! Oh, yeah? Well, I'm calling a surprise witness! My hands! And they will prove beyond a reasonable doubt that your lawyer's neck is guilty of being Broken. No, 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 Anything I can help you with? Just one more thing. These genealogy records. Do you have them on microfike? The textbooks. Let's take a look. Hmm. No, it looks like they were destroyed last year for. Let's see here. Ah. For no reason, according to the report. We'll have to cancel school for the next six years. Yay! So. Thank you, Pyro. You! This is all your fault! Ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho ho! You'll starve before you reach me, soldier! So says Christopher, the communist mountain! You will get closer when I crawl towards you, mountain! That is an order! Huh? He's hallucinating so much that he just imagines a, an entire mountain is a communist person. Aw, oh, crap! How'd they find us? They couldn't have tracked us. We've been stealthy like shadows. Something must have brought them here. There are only two things that attract bears. Honey and menstruating women. My god, I knew it! Somehow I always knew! Pyro! Huh? Stop locking the door! Good lord, this plate is filled with honey! Amelia Earhart's <laughs> It did have me there when I first watched that. I did almost think Pyro was a woman. But, um, we don't even know anything about Pyro. If you check the Wikipedia, Pyro's age is Pyro. Heck, we don't even know if Pyro is a human. Whoa! Slow down, youngster! You might trip and 
start a fire, and fire is nobody's friend. Shards everywhere. Some of us are naked here. <laughs> I love Pyro. No homo. And the bear killed every last one of them. Except for Claude Huggins, who hid under the corpse of his wife until the bear left. Too scared to leave, he founded a town in the very spot of the mauling, on top of her skeleton, and called it Hugginsville. In 1847, a wandering pack of teenage bullies forced him to rename it Two Farts. After they left, he was too scared to change it all the way back. Thus, Two Fort was born. Wow, this is fascinating. Are all these books about Two Fort? Nope, that's the only one. I wrote it. <laughs> I love how idiotic the Two Fort people are. <laughs> Just a rant. Does the guy writes a book about Two Fort and a wandering pack of teenage bullies forces a man to rename it Two Farts. Uh, uh, now rename your town Two Farts. Uh, they leave. Now I'm gonna change it to Two Fort. <laughs> These people are so stupid. You. Back off, lady. I'm eating both of these. Make love to me. Okay. Soldier won't take anything from Russians, but when Heavy's sister asks him to have saxophone, um, he just says, okay. Pretty funny, really. I'm not a babysitter. You're not babysitting him. He's your backup. He's a liability. You're not still looking for the Bushman, are you? Almost done. We're following up on one last lead. He's hiding somewhere in the bushes. Do we really need to find him so he can go and hide in a different set of bushes? I still say that- Spy, did you call me just to complain? <sighs> Not originally, no. I'll call when I'm done. What's funny is how he's referred to the bush man. Imagine if Sniper literally was just a walking bush that had a rifle. <laughs> Spy, we came up with a plan! No, you didn't. And you're both morons. What? Shut up! Quickly! Be racist! You f This <laughs> You hear that, stupid? <laughs> What's also funny is, I'm pretty sure the censoring follows along to the French anthem. <laughs> Poor spy. <laughs> but I have no idea what Jana just said. Pretty funny, though. This is all so sad. It's against everything I stand for, but neck fix. You snapped a man's neck, and he lived, and then you fixed his neck. I'm sure SCP-173 would be a bit bamboozled when he finds out he can't kill Australians by snapping their neck. Still, seriously though, how? And thanks to your father. Everyone in New Zealand drowned, and we've been stuck in the seal lab ever since. Where your mother has been trying to drown herself one bottle of wine at a time. Bill Bell, when this wine runs out, I'm going to shoot you, and then kill myself. You know what would be nice, Lana? To get through one day without you proposing a murder-suicide. Practically everyone on lockdown in a nutshell. It's not too much trouble. You know we hate you, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. But really, what would either of you know about hate? Do you have any idea what a man of intelligence could have done to this world if I'd gotten that Australian first? But I don't have it. She does. And as much as I hate to admit it, she's smarter than me. I think she might even be angrier. Whatever despicable things you think I would have done with that power, you're right. And I promise you, what she's planning is worse. Stop her. This is probably one of my favorite lines or favorite moments in the entire series of the comics. So, thank you, you withered old husk. Your heart barely had time to stop beating. The robots merely drained out all of your blood. So, 
I just put the blood back in. Slush! I refuse to believe it's that easy. I know, yeah? Why do people even go to medical school? Wait, how did you separate all the blood types? Arr, different types of blood. Miss Pauling came back stupid. Ha! Yes, what foolishness. Miss Pauling, I've been using my own underwear to sponge blood out of puddles. Trust me, the type is the least of your problems. Well, um, <clears throat> he's not wrong, but, um, by the seventh comic, if it's ever made, they're probably going for, to forget all about this whole blood types thing. So, God willing, hopefully they all have the same blood type. If I forgot to mention it before now, you snipers are the worst people on the planet. He wasn't a sniper. He was a sadist. There's a difference. Snipers don't muck around with gut shots and monologues. We just take the shot. Yes, you're a credit to the institution of shooting people from far away. Gonna have to agree with Spy. Also, I remade that line quite a few times. The doctor, you will not die on my table. I'll just kill you here. Flash! Ah! What? What the hell? What the hell did you just do? Here. Shink. Let me show you. Epic medic moment. <laughs> Once again, remember the rule, don't melee a medic. The Ross, why are you covered in gasoline? Click. <laughs> Where is everybody? We're getting freaking swarmed here. Two. Blam. I don't know. Did Spy just leave? Yeah, leaving's about all he's good for. Trust me. What the heck happened to Pyro? He... Ooh! Oh, there he is. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I do not need to live forever. Just long enough to sit here and watch you die. One of the best lines practically ever. Maybe it was something else. It's because we don't have souls. What? Well, they don't, but... Uh, nothing. Carry on. I don't know what to tell you. But either way, we're Team Fortress. And you're dead. Out with the old and in with the new. Team Fortress 1 kind of sucked anyway. It had very, very old graphics. But that was a nice line, Miss Pauling. And um, I think that's going to conclude this. I'm sure that towards the end, the audio came in a second early. Never know how to fix that, but... Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.